I received this GM 328 transistors tester. Although it's capable of doing diodes, LEDs, all sorts of three terminal devices, capacitors, inductors, resistors, um, and depending on the setup screen, it may do, uh, well, I believe it does do uh, a TTL square wave outlet. I believe this indicates it produces a square wave pulse. Now it does not come with the 9 volt power supply, but it comes with an acrylic case, all for $13. Now this is from Alice. 1101983. And of course, this is an eBay seller. Alice has been around for years. So, the tester itself is completely pre assembled, has a little protective coating on the display. It's got a ZIF socket. and a rotary encoder with a push button. It does come with four standoffs that are normally just used as feet and a knob for the encoder. There are some additional standoffs here that may or may not replace these standoffs. The kit is, of course, you don't need to take this paper off, but is normally assembled by taking all the paper off and ending up with a clear piece of plastic, thus making it a clear enclosure. And I think there are at least one power LED. Let's start by taking all this paper off. It's pretty easy to take off. It you don't really want to scratch it, but once you get a corner started, you can pretty easily just go around. Here's all the plastic naked, and I figured out all but one piece where it, where it might go. This little group up here came with the device. While this little group down here came with the case. The base is this piece. Four slots, four holes. I'm initially going to start out this way. The side panels have a slope to them. In other words, they're right angles here and here, and then there's a slope here. The back fits in, or this panel fits in, like this. Now you see these sloping slots here and over here? There's a third slot in the back. That accepts this panel.
like that. It's an interior sloping shelf. And I believe then that the device sits on top of the extensions like this. Well, I can see I have it left and right re reversed. So I reversed these sides. This will sit in like this on the shelf, or at least parallel to the shelf. And in order for that hole to line up for the power jack, I have to loosen up these uh, standoffs. So I've got these standoffs slopping around in the breeze here. I'm holding the four sides and this shelf panel in with the, the gum bands. Now I could lift the bottom off. The rubber band doesn't secure the bottom. I think then I'll install this And I'll use these standoffs Could this be how it goes? with these things at right angles to the board, but passing through at an angle to the bottom. Now I can't just put this on because of this shelf. Now, we have this piece of plastic which seems like it's a no-brainer to go right there. Then it looks like we have another one. There we go. right there. Then we have this fellow. He goes over top. So 
And we have one with the window panel cut out. It goes on there. And one that's solid that goes on there. And that explains these long screws. They'll go here and here, and they need to be long because they're going through three sheets of plastic. Now we can put them back on. There, the window, and we'll finish it with that. Here are the original standoffs and screws that came with the bare board. That is the assembled board, but not the enclosure. The only problem I see is that when I push this down, the case doesn't like me. handle doesn't stick out far enough to uh, and that's a real problem here's the finished uh, little tester I did cut away a piece of plastic here and a piece of plastic here. You can see I didn't do too well. In order to make this easy to go up and down. And I was considering increasing the radius of this hole right about here. Because you can see the hole is not centered anywhere near the part but it doesn't seem to affect now I press the button I have it hooked to a 12 volt source and here we have the uh, I have a 2N2222 uh, in here which is an, a bipolar junction transistor NPN FHE of uh, 180 got some test information there and then it tells me the emitter is connected to pin 1 oh, it wasn't quick enough uh, the emitter is connected to pin 1 the base is collected to pin 2 and the collector is pin 3 this doesn't appear to be the standard pin configuration. See that? Pins 1, 1, 1 and 3, 3, 3. And then we have pin 2 all by its lonesome here and of course down below. The pins are duplicated in both rows. But we have pin 2 in the middle there's a divider in this socket, so pin 2 is right on this side of the divider. Then the three holes on this side, and the three holes above pin 2, are pins 1 and 3. 
I found two different manuals for the GM 328. I've converted them to English. <laughs> uh, they were in quasi-English. In any event, I'll have PDFs and word drawings of both of them in the uh, directory I'll list below in the description. Take this out. Here I have a random capacitor. Now, here's an interesting thing. If you use pin 2, and then either pin 1 or pin 3, and do a test, in order to repeat the test, I have to push the button. Now, this will time out, I believe, and we've already seen it time out. But if I use pins 3 and 1 in order to test a two terminal device, Okay, we got the same reading, essentially. I can take this out, and it'll do another test. Just did. I can insert another device. Doesn't have to be a capacitor. As long as it's using pin 1 and 3, and it will continue to test this capacitor well, or test whatever two-terminal device you have. I'll go back to this fellow. And there it is again. So in that mode, we can continuously test it. I push and turn the uh, sw switch, I get into a menu. And it allows you to do all kinds of stuff. So for $14 with the case, but not a power supply, I think this is a pretty good deal.